How's it going, guys? I got all kinds of stuff done since the last time, uh, I guess, well, you guys was over. And, uh, first thing is, uh, got a gas stove in here. Uh, it's hooked to an LP tank. And, uh, it's still set up for, uh, natural gas. But it doesn't really affect the top burners as much. I mean, you get, like, a little bit of yellow tips on them, but, um, I'm just going to be using the burners anyways. The oven doesn't work because uh, that's why I got it for free. The oven don't work. So if I was to use the oven, I would have to change the orifice for that at least because it would just be just massive flames. With these, you can kind of adjust them to what you need anyways. But uh, in the rest of the garage, I got all of the uh, one foot thing left at the top. Put a little bit of uh, garage art up. And you can see I got the rest of the one foot thing done in the other room. And put some steps in to go up in the uh, attic. I don't really plan on storing stuff up there. It's just more of a opening the bell to get up in there if I got to do something with wiring or whatever. You know, just a reason to, you know, a way to get up in there if I needed to. And uh, I got all the ceiling put up. And here's the ceiling. And I also... I don't know if you guys ever noticed, but the garage door was all janky with like a 2x2. Two two, a little blocks fastened to it. Got that fixed up with just a, just a deck board. And then on the other side, it's just fastened to the wall. And I got it adjusted so it goes up and down real super easy. It was kind of a struggle to get it up and down. And I also used them uh, insulation panels to insulate the door. Kind of had to squeeze them, you know, I cut them so that they, you know, kind of locked in there. There's like a little, uh, little edge down in here that they fit in. So they ain't going to fall out of there, that's for sure. It is a world of difference having the ceiling in here. Um, even before, right before I got it finished, you could when you went up to that end of the wall, you could just feel the heat just barreling down through the hole, through the end of it. So that definitely fixed things up nice. Uh, built another set of speakers. Um, this setup here is just so that I got sound and you know something to listen to in here in the garage. It you know has, sounds better than just. Uh, you know a little radio or something but um, the acoustics with these boxes just isn't right I ended up putting a second port in them to make them a little bit better but um, they're just made out of a bunch of free stuff I actually my dad gave me one of those piles uh, 12 inch piles and a guy at work gave me a box that had those two and the tweeters in um, I had I ordered two ports and I put it together and it didn't sound right and I took the tweeter out of the hole you know the tweeter was in that hole to begin with and I noticed it sounded way better when I said I took that tweeter out so I just uh, cut another hole and put some more porting in it and I had to buy a second pile to match the first one my dad only gave me one but uh, I'd have you guys sound hear the sound of it but it just you can't videotape that. It just doesn't work. <laughs> uh, the solar has been running for, what, six or seven weeks straight now. You know, as far as the inverter running constantly. And, uh, it's great. It, I've been off all week, and it was cloudy and rainy for like three days in a row, and I was getting kind of low on power. Uh, and pretty much it's been nice today. Uh, it's like 6 o'clock in the evening and I'm down to 12.4 volts. Um, got a second one of the inverters. It's brand new in the box. And uh, in case something happens to this one. Uh, this one here has a little bit of a glitch to it. Uh, when you're running about 50 watts on it, it has a little flicker in the lights for some reason. And then if you turn more load on, it comes out of it. But I just don't... It's like a... It gets caught in between uh, like steps in the step up process, I think. Um, this inverter here actually has quite a bit of miles on it. It right now has 
when I set it up into here, it had 10,000 amper hours on it, plus another 2,600 here, plus another 2,000 here. So, you know, it's got about 15,000 15, amp hours on it so far. Um, and it's cheap, you know, it's like a $200 thing, so... I don't know, it might have something wrong with it, it might be just a, a glitch that I've never seen before, because... Oh, that's another thing, too. These LEDs right here, I just changed out. Um, see, there's two over there, and then there's three and three. These six are from the Dollar Tree. Um, there's two for a dollar. And I plugged them into the watt meter, and it used about a watt more than the, uh, those are Walmart ones. They use about a watt more, but they're brighter. If you put them right beside each other, you can tell a big difference in brightness. And I just thought, well, I bought six, and I changed these out to make this room here a little bit brighter, just because of its size. But it's not that they're more, you know, inefficient than the Walmart ones, it's just that they are brighter, so there's just a difference in you know you're getting you know getting you're getting your brightness out of the watt that you're getting your extra watt but uh let's see if i can find the box yeah it was here's the dollar tree ones they're supposed to be 60 watt equivalents and i say they're brighter than a 60 watt regular ball they, 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 these things are like 75 watt equivalent and then right here is right here is one of the walmart bulbs and they're even bigger. They're big, a little bit bigger, about that much taller. I see. That they're just high, a little bit higher wattage, and they're a little bit brighter. But enough of that. So maybe whenever I did see the flickering, okay, on the inverter, it was with the new bulbs, and I'm not really sure. Maybe, maybe the capacitance of them. But even then, I mean, the inverter shouldn't be messing up. It should be, you know, 60 hertz, and it is a sine wave inverter. I don't know. Maybe they're maybe I could just put a little bit bigger capacitors in them in them bulbs. That'd be a lot of trouble though. Um got a new trailer. Uh the other one I had started off as a four by six. And within a like a couple months of owning a thing, I added two feet to the back of it. And you know, of course the axle wasn't in the right place, so every time you used it. You had to try to make sure you had more weight in the front, and that was difficult to do when you had like sheets of wood on there because you know you'd almost have to like take cement blocks with you just to stack on the front to make it heavier. And uh, it just it was just a pain in the butt. And uh, in order to haul like that sidewinder thing, when I get it done, I need a wider trailer because it's wider than four foot. So I got me a five by eight. I really wish they'd make a lightweight one like this that is 5x10, but they don't. I mean, the next step up is it's got a lot more extra framing, and um, of course, you know, you're going to have people hauling stuff that pretty much whatever's going to fit on there, you know, then the next thing you know is something this design would be overloaded. But it would be nice if they'd just rate it at, say, 1,200 pounds, and it's bigger, though, you know. There is things that... Be nice to be able to haul 10 foot long sheets of stuff or boards if you know but this is a major improvement to the other one um just because the geometry and everything's right plus i got my ramp back it's a lot easier to load up a mower or a little uh well and ate the sidewinder done um this tank right here um i plan on building the water tower I'm gonna put it at the back side of the building and then put spouting up and then run it down into this tank. And I'm gonna put it on stilts so that it's off the ground so that way you can get you know gravity fed water from it. But that's the next project I think I'm gonna work on. Um, built a little awning. This deck was already here. And um, it is it's nice to be able to sit out here and uh, you know it's just a well, I had a water issues, water running down the side of the building, and then it was getting down on this ledge, and it was water getting up inside of it. But, uh, it's 
24 center and it has like a tarp material for roofing it's pretty heavy duty stuff it probably the last couple years and I think I got enough of it to do it again later but uh and then it's I got like eight inch long leg bolts going through it and then uh I built the whole thing on the ground with nails and I was putting it up and it kept having trouble with it I'm trying to pull it apart while he's beating on it and the way this is right here this ledge wouldn't you know it's I put the sheets of wood on it after I put the framing up but it made it so that I couldn't get nails through this into those and it was pulling away so I put screws in there just to to keep it from separating and I didn't want to disturb that lip you know that's what I wanted to use to channel the water from the other roof onto this one but, uh, I already got like bumblebees interested into it I should have for all the more lumber it took to build it I should have bought like treated 2x4s so they wouldn't be interested in boring holes into it but it's just a temporary structure anyway. This thing's a rickety shack, you know, but, and uh, it's not, the deck ain't straight, the building ain't straight, so binking this straight was almost impossible, but uh, it made a nice little addition to it. And I got a little uh, project at home, I'll show you guys real quick, uh, something for the wife. It's also a little deck, but uh, right, we'll see you there. My wife wanted uh, one of those uh, 10 by 10 tents and uh, told her it really wouldn't work unless it was like fastened to something because you know it just blow away and roll across the street and uh, it'd be nice about you know to have something to set it on so I built her this little uh, little patio for it to go on it's 10 by 10 as well and uh, she shoved a bunch of extra wood underneath of it but it just sits on pavers and it's all two by four structure but it's supported uh, every five feet um, there's support there support in the middle in all the corners and then on each side here and then there's a beam that goes across the middle and it's supported in the middle of it but uh, happy wife happy life Alright, so we're back out in the garage. I also like to make a mention that I did finish all of the outlets in this building. There's the one behind there. There's a couple few going around. They're all done. All This building is done. Other than, you know, like if I decide to paint it or something like that, you know, but I ain't gonna, I, I'm not going to do that. This is just, you know a garage hobby type place now has a ceiling all the receptacles are in uh, this room here only has two receptacles I, I didn't really this one there and uh, one over there for this kind of shelf thing right here uh, later on I need to put some supports in for that it's kind of sagging in the middle and, uh, other than that I mean this is all done in here there's no more to do Gave these guys here a bath. Gave the mower and a little side-by-side uh, -side a bath. Kind of discovered that the kids wrecked it while I was giving it a bath. I mean, they got somewhere along the line. They hit hit this fender. It didn't break it, but it did crack the paint on it and kind of marked up right there. But kids will be kids, I guess. But that's all I got for today. Pretty uh, a lot done since the last time you guys was over. But making videos of while I'm doing it, it's just kind of like watching paint dry. So you know, <laughs> oh, the little uh, addition tank to my air compressor. But uh, makes it. I was doing some sandblasting. Sandblast with some glass, a glass tabletop, and. Uh, it makes it a lot so you got a longer time of blasting between cycles pretty much you can blast a little bit while it's running you know once it starts up and runs but uh, 
it makes it so you can blast pretty much the whole can. I got like a little blasting can right here. You can pretty much empty this can by the time you start running out of, you know, the air pressure starts getting too low. But it was a nice little addition to it. But I'll catch you guys later. See ya.